Yeah, my name is uh, Jos Meelhorst. I work at the University of Pennsylvania, United States of America. So my, my lab, uh, we study um, the, the post-infusion specimens to get a better understanding of the potency and toxicities of the, the cells we infuse in patients. What, what's most exciting, uh, I think, for the field right now is that we have additional gene editing tools. Uh, we just heard this morning about Talon. Uh, at, at our uh, center, we use uh, CRISPR-Cas9 to uh, modify the genome of the, of the T cells to further enhance the expression of the, of the targeting gene, but also to enhance the potency of the cells. And that's what I think is the future of uh, autologous cell therapies and allogeneic therapies as well. Uh, I think what's most important right now, uh, we've seen efficacy. Um, what we haven't seen is uh, a, a product that has commercial viability at this point. It's, it's getting there, but I think the automation of the process is really important. And allogeneic uh, CAR T cells, that's a good step in, uh, in, in, the, in the direction. But in the end, in my mind, autologous products are the way to go. And if we can streamline the process better, if we understand better which cells actually drive the therapy, and if we can put that in, in a process, I think that the, the therapy will have a great future. The public opinion of the industry, um, hard to say. Uh, I, I think um, the, it may be rather negative, although at this point we have, don't have a cost structure in place yet. On the other hand, we have seen lots of small molecules come to, uh, into, into clinical practice. We haven't seen a durable response overall, I think, to those molecules. I think what we will see with this new cell therapy, there will be cures, and I think that may change the uh, public opinion of, of uh, biotechnology uh, at large. And if we can then further enhance the uh, product uh, uh, manufacturing process better to bring down the cost, I think in the end, the price tag for our therapy for a cure is gonna be much smaller and, uh, and that will also then, I think, favorably, favorably impact the opinion of the public uh, about the industry. Um, so this partnership, uh, which we've been in for more than four years, has been incredibly synergistic um, in, in the sense that uh, Novartis, via uh, research funding, has facilitated a large number of clinical trials and, and, and evaluation of the, of the therapies that we developed. At the same time, they have their pipeline, we have our expertise, and we have integrated both, uh, uh, both operations almost uh, into a, a well-oiled machine where uh, we utilize their expertise and, and ours to develop new, uh, new, new drugs, if you will, and test it in clinical trials. Uh, so that's in, on, the, on the clinical side, at the same time, understanding uh, the therapies, we have our analytical tools, they have theirs, and, and also on that front, on the research front, we have had great synergy uh, between UPAN and between Novartis. I think it, it all started in, uh, uh, in, in uh, 2006 when we published our first papers on uh, testing CAR therapies in mouse models in 2009 with the CD19 targeting CAR and the mesothelin targeting CAR. They both look very promising uh, and, and actually what we saw was the efficacy uh, of, of our therapy was far greater in patients than what we've seen in animals. And, uh, and actually what convinced investors, what convinced our alliance partner really was the clinical results that we had in, 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 in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So I think that's important. I think with animal models, they're very helpful in a sense in, 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 in just a bare bones test system. But to prove efficacy, I think in the end, really what you need to do is run clinical trials. Mm -hmm.